So a few days ago, ESPN came out with its annual top 100 players of the year. And every year, this sets the precedent for the best players for the upcoming season. But before I get into talking about that, I just want to say thank you to everybody that subscribed to this channel, that's ever left a like on this channel, because I recently hit 1,000 subscribers on this channel. And as you all know, that's a huge milestone for me and I am extremely happy. I'm extremely grateful. And uh, I just wanted to let you guys know that I really appreciate you guys and everything you guys do, all the positive comments that you guys leave. You don't know how much that means to me with all the work I put into this channel. Uh, and so with that being said, if you're a new viewer, I make videos on this channel every week. So leave a subscribe and a like. And if you are a reoccurring viewer, leave a like and your thoughts down in the comments below. Give me some suggestions for videos and uh yeah aside from that let's jump into the video my name is Emmanuel Kamia and you're watching League Talk so I wanted to make a video about this list because naturally I disagree with it and I think that's the case for literally probably every NBA fan people are going to have differing opinion over this thing and that's one thing you have to keep in mind to be respectful of other people's opinions the best thing about sports is arguing or discussing it with other people and when doing that you always have to remember to be respectful about that you have to be respectful of the person across from you and that's just something I want on this channel if you guys argue in the comments below about you know differing opinions on whatever uh, of this list make sure to be respectful to the person you're talking to but with that being said I'm gonna rehash the list of the top 25 players listed by ESPN because the list is a hundred but I only have time for 25 and if you guys actually want the full 100 I can break it down into four videos so this one would be the first and then 25 to 50 and then 50 to 75 and then 75 to 100 I'm just, but I'm just gonna do 1 to 25 right now and so with that being said the, the list goes as follows Kevin Durant at number one Giannis Antetokounmpo at number two LeBron James at number three Luka Doncic at number four Stephen Curry at number five Nikola Jokic at number six Joel Embiid at number seven Damian Lillard at number eight Anthony Davis at number 9, James Harden at number 10, Bradley Beal at number 11, Paul George at number 12, Chris Paul at number 13, Jason Tatum at number 14, Devin Booker at number 15, Jimmy Butler at number 16, Trey Young at number 17, Donovan Mitchell at number 18, Chris Middleton at number 19, Kyrie Irving at number 20, Bam Adebayo at number 21, Drew Holiday at number 22, Zion Williamson at number 23, Carl Anthony Towns at number 24, and Rudy Gobert at number 25. That round out the top 25 players that ESPN thinks uh, going into this following season, which I'm really excited for. So, so subscribe to this channel for all the NBA talk and all the NBA takes for the following season. I promise you will not be disappointed. But of course, I have placement issues with you know some of the guys that are placed on this list. The number one placement issue I actually have on this list is not actually it's on this list, but it's not in the top 25, and that being. Ben Simmons and Russell Westbrook. Ben Simmons has been ranked higher than Russell Westbrook. Ben Simmons is ranked at number 28 and Russell Westbrook is ranked at number 29. And I, of course, have a huge problem with that. Now, I'm not even the biggest Russell Westbrook fan. Uh, if you are a recurring viewer of this channel, you know how I feel about Russell Westbrook. I'm not the biggest fan of his game. Me defending him, I'm just trying to be objective, but I have to call a spade a spade when I see it. And there's no way in hell Ben Simmons is better than Russell Westbrook. All of the offensive things that Ben Simmons struggles with, shooting, being able to be effective in a half court offense, Russell Westbrook is better at. Now, Russell Westbrook might not be the best at these things. He may not be good at these things, but he's definitely better than Ben Simmons at shooting. Russ is more of an asset to his team than Ben Simmons is to his. In fact, I think if you were to switch Russell Westbrook with Ben Simmons in a playoff series against the Atlanta Hawks, I think the 76ers would have moved on to play the Bucs in the next round. Um, because of Ben Simmons, he became a very big liability to his team and his team ended up losing because of that. And I think after that series, it further solidified and exemplified why Russell Westbrook is a better player than Ben Simmons currently. Ben Simmons is a transition player. Once you get him into half-court offense, he really... You can really marginalize him because you know what he's going to do. You know he's going to the basket. You know that's the only way he scores. So he becomes really easy. He becomes one-dimensional. I know Russell Westbrook's kind of like that, but at least he has a mid-range jump shot. 
at least that. And so not even to mention all of the years, four years running straight consecutively that Russell Westbrook has averaged a triple-double, which is very hard to do. You can't just scoff at that. Now that was my first issue I had with that list. But before I go any further, I just wanna make sure that I completely agree with the top three rankings of Kevin Durant, Giannis Antetokounmpo, and LeBron James. LeBron James has been aging and in recent years we've seen him not be able to do things he could do in prior seasons like carry a team, average high numbers, look inhuman. But in recent years, LeBron has been aging and because of that, I think taking him off the pedestal best player in the world is only right. I agree with him on being in a third spot. And then Giannis Antetokounmpo, even though he beat Kevin Durant and won the championship this year, I don't think he's better than Kevin Durant because Kevin Durant, I think, is just more skilled. Now, they're almost the same in terms of dimensions. Uh, they're, I think, both 6'11". Giannis weighs about 10 pounds more than, than Kevin Durant, but I give Kevin Durant the edge for the top and best player in the world, in the league, because of what I saw him do, not only this playoffs, um, where he exemplified his skills, shooting, right, handling, passing, literally doing all those things, and then also exemplifying that in the Olympics this summer, I have to give him the best player in the world. If Giannis had the skills that KD has, I'd probably give it to him, but just because he doesn't, I have to give Kevin Durant the edge on that. And so I just wanna make sure that I got that out of the way. Those are the most important people, right, on a, on a list. I'm gonna jump into the first issue I have in the top 25, which is Trey Young and Kyrie Irving. I do not believe that Kyrie Irving should be ranked lower than Trey Young. I do not believe that Trey Young is better than Kyrie Irving. He, he, Kyrie Irving is ranked 20th and Trey Young is ranked 17th. Now, maybe in the next few years, maybe two years, maybe a year and a half, two years, Trey Young will be ranked better than Kyrie Irving, but not right now. There's nothing that Kyrie does that Trey Young does better. Shooting? No. Handling? No. Passing? No. More clutch? No. Even though Trey Young has ice in his veins, Kyrie has colder ice in his veins. Kyrie, it doesn't matter if it's game seven in the finals, Kyrie, right? And so people have this misconception that Trey Young is some sort of great shooter or great offensive player because he tends to shoot these long range, far out shots that are kind of like Stephen Curry. But unlike Stephen Curry, he doesn't make these shots. Steph actually makes these bomb shots, right? And in fact, if you look at Trey Young's three point percentage, it is 34% for both this season, the past season that just went by, and his whole career, right? And if you contrast that with Kyrie Irving, Kyrie Irving this past season averaged 40% three-point shooting. Uh, and even though Kyrie Irving has played more seasons than Trey Young, which gives him more of a chance to have a lower three-point percentage, he still has a higher three-point percentage career overall than Trey Young, even though he's played more seasons than Trey Young in the league. So that goes to show you, Kyrie's just better. He's just better at shooting, better at handles. And they're about the same height, they're about the same player, but I think Kyrie has the edge on him. And I think in a few years, right now, if you gave me the two to start a franchise with, I'd take Trey Young just because he's younger. But right now, I think Kyrie is just better than Trey Young at the current moment. And it won't always be like that. I think Trey Young eventually is gonna overtake him, but in this moment right now, I would not give it to Trey Young. I don't think he's better than, than Kyrie. And lastly, the final issue I have in the top 25 that I don't like is Anthony Davis, James Harden. Anthony Davis is ranked higher than James Harden. James Harden is ranked at the 10th spot and, and Anthony Davis is ranked in the 9th spot. Not only do I think James Harden should be higher than Anthony Davis, I think James Harden should be in the 6th spot above Joel Embiid, Damian Lillard, and Nikola Jokic. Because people assume that James Harden went to the Brooklyn Nets and his numbers dwindled, they assume that he is somehow, he has somehow got worse. That's not the case. Historically, we've seen that when top tier players join together, their numbers go down in order to compensate for each other. Uh, we saw that with Chris Bosh, we saw that with Dwayne Wade, we saw that with Stephen Curry when Kevin Durant joined the team, and Clay Thompson. Their numbers have to go down in order to compensate for each other for the greater good. And that's what's happened with James Harden. I actually think that James Harden, in contrast to what people think, has exemplified why he's a better player than Anthony Davis because of the following ways. James Harden demonstrated his ability to be able to adjust to play with Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant seemingly overnight. 
he got there and they started winning. And, and that speaks to his intellect, to his ability to mesh with different kinds of players. Not only that, he also assume the role of leader on the Nets. Now I know Kevin Durant's the best player on there, right? But James Harden assumed the leader, a facilitator. Um, he gets his teammates involved, gets the balls to his, to his teammates when he when they need it. And he still manages to average 24, eight and 10. And furthermore, like Stephen Curry, he was actually in the running for the MVP this year before he got injured. That's something he's done year in, year out. He's always in MVP talks, year in, year out, ever since 2015. And Anthony Davis has been nowhere to be seen. Anthony Davis, he, he, he has been more of a no-show in recent years and I just don't think he's more skilled than, than James Harden. I don't, I don't think there's anything that Anthony Davis brings that James Harden really does, can't do. He, he scores just as much, rebounds just as much for his height, assists more, facilitates more, able to lead more, you know? And furthermore, Anthony Davis's frequency to be injured really makes it hard to value him as a player over James Harden. While James Harden, barring this, anomaly of a season was injured, he's been an iron man. He plays all 82 games. Not only do I value James Harden over Anthony Davis, I also think he's a better player than Anthony Davis. And that's gonna bring me to the conclusion of this video. Those were just my thoughts on the top 25. Let me know what you guys think of this list. I'm gonna leave it a link in the description below to the full list. Who do you think is snub? Who do you think should be higher? Who do you think should be lower? Make sure to leave that on the comments down below. Make sure to be respectful to other people and leave your thoughts down in the comments below. Again, I'm very grateful for the 1,000 subscribers. And aside from that, see you kids.